What's up, everybody? Mr. Reddito here. So, I know a lot of people have been wondering where I've been in the past few videos. Well, let me just clarify before we hop into today's video. I went on a little vacation and I forgot behind my blood pressure medicine. And let's just say it really messed me up. But I'm feeling better now, so it's all good, and I'm here to give you guys stories every single day again. So let's go ahead and jump into it. The title of today's story is... I married my sister's fiancé just to save my family. I've been living a lie for over three years now. This is the first time I've admitted it to anyone. I stole my sister's life and nobody knows. I'm married to the man who was supposed to marry her and he doesn't know that I assumed her identity. Besides my family, according to everybody else, I'm my sister Zara. I've recently given birth after being married for three years and I'm suffering from some serious depression. I want someone else to know, but I know that my family would not allow me. According to our deal, I have two more years here while they try to fix our little problem. I know, I know. It sounds crazy, but why would anyone in their right minds take their sister's happiness? It's up to you if you see me as a villain, but I did all this for my family to repay them for what they have done for me. In order to protect them, I will not be using their real names. I come from a country where it's common for an arranged marriage to happen. However, the law states that it's a choice if you want to be in an arranged marriage. Contrary to popular belief, they do work. My uncle and aunt are in an arranged marriage and they love and support each other so darn much. You see, I grew up in a well-off family. My father and uncle co-own a business, and my brother Kai, my sister Zara, and I, Clara, all went to school. My brother and I attend university, and my sister did not. As soon as my sister completed her education, she stopped going to school. I mean, no one forced her to, she just didn't want to have a career. My father allowed her to work for the company, while well, he took care of all her needs, as for myself, I begged my parents to let me study overseas. My grades were good, and the rest of the girls I went to school with wanted to go to university. Girls here, they do attend university, but if you're from a well-off family, then there's not really that much of a need to even bother. My parents agreed. Even though our relatives did not agree, since I already had every single thing and would marry well, there's literally no need according to them. What I did not know was that they, well, we were in financial trouble. They allowed me to pursue my studies to become an architect, but they were struggling back home and I never saw it. I was in my second year when I heard that my sister was getting married. I asked her, is it love? But she told me that it was not but she said that she had gotten to know this man and felt as if he would treat her well. She seemed very happy and over the moon. So, over the months, we discussed her soon-to-be marriage, and she liked the family and was excited to make the house a home, etc. My sister Zara was the most down-to-earth person you could have ever met. You see, small things make her happy. She brought light into every room she walked into, and I often wish to be more like her but I was headstrong. My parents already knew that I did not want to get married and have kids before I had a career. They were not happy about it, but they had to accept it. There were already enough kids in the family, including my uncle's family. My father and his brother were co-owners of the family company, so that meant our family was a unit. My aunt was like my own mother, and my cousins were like my own siblings. My brother Kai, well on the other hand, <laughs> was getting ready to take over the company. I was happy, out of the country and pursuing my studies. I had such a big dream. I could not wait until I was done studying and I could make my dreams a reality. I was grateful to my family who allowed me to take my own path. My family is pretty open and unorthodox and as long as you're happy and what you're doing harms no one, then there's no problem with it. Wow. And then I got the call. In the middle of the night. I was writing my exams when I get the call that my sister had passed away. She'd been involved in a car accident and passed away on the scene and the funeral was quick. 
By the time that I arrived, it was already done. I was shattered, knowing that she was two weeks away from her wedding, but there was no time to waste because my mother pulled me to the side the day that I got home. She told me that we're in trouble, because in two weeks, her betrothed would need a bride. I asked if he did not know that she passed away, and she said no. Well, I was taken aback. The reason he didn't know was that his family was based overseas. If he found out that the wedding was off, then we would be in serious financial trouble. This was when I first learned that we were in a massive amount of debt. The stock market collapsed and we lost money in investments, which in turn impacted our business. But if Zara were to marry Alex, well, then our family would be saved. But she's unable to, and we're going to be in trouble. So now we're in a state of catastrophe. Her death had both an emotional and financial impact on all of us. I could not sleep after what my mother told me. In addition, I was worried about my exams. Even though I had explained that it was a family emergency, the university was strict. They had a possibility of failing me. Little did I know that I would never set foot in a lecture hall again, though. The next day, there was a family-held meeting. My grandfather, Aunt Layla, and Uncle Sid, along with my parents and my brother, discussed the way moving forward. And then my uncle said his bride idea. There's no need for the wedding to not take place. My sister was a year older than me, but we looked exactly the same. People often mistook us for twins. Even down to the skin tone, hair color, and airy shape, we looked similar. We had a few differences, like the shape of our noses, but with makeup, we could look similar. My uncle and my father went off to discuss the issue while the rest of us remained. My father told my mother what the plan was, and then she sat me down and told me the request that she had to make. They needed me to pretend to be my sister and marry Alex in two weeks so that we could save the family. I was mortified. I barely knew Alex. At least my sister knew him and seemed to have a liking for him. I was numb as I listened to them and tried to convince me what I should do. Well, I was overwhelmed and decided to visit Grandma. I stayed there for two days as I thought about thinking of it. Well, in the end, my thought process led me to the conclusion that there's no choice but for me to go along with it. Sure, I'd be giving up my education, but if we did not have money, then I would still not get the education anyways. I thought of my little cousins who were still in school. I did not want them to suddenly have to adjust to a life where they had less, if not nothing. It was clear to me. For years, the family had sacrificed and allowed me to return to university year after year, even though it meant drawing the family's money away. I even learned a lot, and I had a lot of freedom, but now it's time to repay them. But if there's one thing my sister taught me when she was still alive, it was selflessness. I have never been selfless. I have always been difficult. The rebel. She'd been willing to marry him for our sake, so that's why I decided I'm going to do it. I'm going to discard my identity, and I'm going to become Zara. It wasn't hard. I knew all there was to know about her. The bonus part was that the family I was getting married to was not well integrated within this community. They simply would never find out. I learned her mannerisms, wore her clothing, and talked to Alex. I don't know why my sister put him on a pedestal, but that man was nothing special, I'll be the first to tell ya. He did not even have an interest in Zara's daily life. All he did was talk about himself, his company, and blah 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 his family. It was easy. All I had to do was listen to him talk for hours on a video call and... Two weeks later, we got married. I guess you could call my wedding luxurious, but it does not really matter if I wasn't happy, right? But I knew I only had to stick this out for five years. It was a deal I made with my parents behind closed doors. I did not have to have a child, but if they tried to make me have a child, it's up to me to handle it. And so for the past three years, I've been living a lie. I thought that after five years, I could walk out of this unscathed, but boy, oh boy, I was wrong. A few weeks ago, I gave birth to my husband's child. I'm not doing well. I feel guilty because this is not my life. 
I feel trapped in this never-ending nightmare. But at least now somebody knows there's nothing anyone can do but just listen. What's up, everybody? Mr. Reddito here. Today's story is such a whirlwind. We do have a few updates. The first update came out exactly three months later. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Guys, if you're not subscribed to the channel, just take a second, click that subscribe button. It helps me out so much and I appreciate it. Here's your first update. Hey, it's me again. A lot of you have been asking for an update and you have a lot of questions, so let me describe my marriage to you. I go by the name Zara. I live overseas with my husband. I cannot mention the name of the country, but it's surrounded by a lot of water and there's wildlife. That's the plus of living here, I guess. I'm surrounded by nature, so I don't always feel trapped. But at night, when he comes back home from his latest mistress, I feel like I'm in a cage that I can't escape. You asked me to describe my husband, so hey, I'll describe him to you. He's not a bad man. It's just that I don't love him, and I feel that I cannot connect with him, but he gives me freedom. I can wear what I want, I can go out with friends, I can visit family, etc. As long as his family is present, I'm the epitome of a blushing bride. My husband has a mistress. Well, mistress is. He told me about them on the first day. He told me that I could have someone but never let anyone find out or he would have to divorce me in a very embarrassing manner. I've never cheated, though. I've never had the opportunity or desire, and my mother raised me to be loyal if I was ever married, and I never planned to get married or even date. I've just been interested. Even my university friends found me peculiar, but life had other things in store for me. He is at least kind enough not to bring any of these women near me. In exchange, I have more luxury than I can imagine. And his family keeps my family's company afloat, but then, of course, I fell pregnant several months ago. Don't worry, it was consensual. I knew that I was pregnant and I could not bring myself to terminate. The other reason was that I knew I would be more respected if I bore him an heir. When I leave, I don't plan to take the child with me. To be honest, I just don't see an end to this marriage. It was all so complicated now. My family was now too entangled in their family, and I was also very depressed. I did not care what happened to me. I ate as much as I could. I barely left the house, and I developed a love for video games. Gaming was my first love, I will not lie to you. There, I felt like I could control myself in my life, but soon enough, I gave birth, and then he sent me off to stay with his parents. He found our son annoying and hated the fact that I always awake just to take care of him. He first kicked me out of our room and I slept in the spare bedroom. I tried to get a nanny to help, but he was impatient. He told me that I was to stay with his mom until the child was one year of age. And so, for the past few months, I've been living with his mother and it's been hell. She regularly insults me and treats me like a house slave. After being here for a month, I asked him to go ahead, take me back home. But he refused. So I was forced to stay with his mother and his sister who mistreated me. I was now the cook, the cleaner, and the personal assistant. In addition to that, I had to take care of the baby. They take him during the day and parade him around the town for everybody to see. But at night, he's wide awake and I have to care for him. I found it hard to form a bond with my son. I feel like my son's trapping me in this family and the thing they say to me make me feel like I'm nothing. They think I was Zara, so they insulted me because I'm, quote, not educated. But I just kept quiet because I'm obedient. For if I blow the cover, I stand to lose so much more. They insult my whole family and call them leeches. I'm left to stay at home while they go about their lives. I've lost all the weight I've gained over the past few months because of my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. My sister-in-law, Sophie always has kids who are now my responsibility, apparently. Because of the abuse, I just never had time for myself. At night, I have to take care of my baby, and I still wake up early in the morning to order from my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. I cannot take this anymore. I cannot tell my family because they will tell me that if I leave, I will ruin everything for them. But I cannot do this anymore. I hate my husband and his entire family. 
I just want to take my baby and go somewhere far away. I'm sure my family would be able to figure something out. In all honesty, for the past few years, I've been saving all the money that my husband's given me. When he goes away for extended trips, he always gives me money so I can cover for him with his family. He pays me to keep quiet about his infidelity and the amount of money that I've saved up would be enough for me to lead a comfortable life for at least a couple of years. But I'm just thinking, should I leave? Update number two. He found out that I wanted to leave and now he's taken my child. At this point, I wish that I could just go back in time and have never agreed to this marriage. I think that my family would have survived and I would have been in a better position than I am right now. I've been insulted, mistreated, and cheated on by that man, all because I tried to leave. I decided to follow through with my plans to take my child and go. I have a friend who agreed to take me and my child in. I got all the paperwork, transport, and plane tickets and I was ready to leave. But then when I was at the airport, I was told that I could not leave the country. Next thing I knew, airport security was taking me to be questioned. They took away my child and I was kept there for hours. No one wanted to tell me anything, only that I could not leave the country. Hours later, they released me. They said that someone had come for me, and of course, you guessed it. My husband was the person they have given my child. I had no choice but to follow him. My heart thundering in my chest, and the only thing I could think of was that he was probably going to kill me. The rage in his eyes was unfamiliar. There have been moments where he has lost his composure before, but he has always known the limits. He has punished me, but has never touched me. As soon as we got into the car, he handed our child to a woman that I did not recognize, then grabbed my hand and pulled me into the car. The car ride home was long and tense, and I wanted it to last forever, for I was scared of what he would do next. We got out of the car, but the lady with my child remained in the car. I tried to protest to Alex, but he told me to, quote, Shut up! Get into the house! In the harshest tone you could ever imagine. At this point, I was shaking in my boots. I told myself that I was stupid to even consider trying to run away from him with his child, but the thought of leaving my son to be raised by his family was pure hell. They would turn him into a spoiled brat. He would never know me, and he would never be a decent person. He would be just like his father who did not respect anyone, not even the woman who gave him a child. I knew that he had been bringing women into the house when I was gone. Uh, there were parties in the house nearly every day. The person who let me know all this was my trusted confidant, Jenna, our housekeeper. I looked around for her once we entered the house, but did not see her. In fact, all the staff had been replaced. Do not think that I do not know what goes on within my own household, he said. So, he had found out somehow that Jenna was helping me that she had been the one to make sure that he signed the documents needed for me to leave with our child without getting into legal trouble. I'd been very sloppy in executing my plan to escape and had paid very dearly. He sent me to my room, told me to not even think of leaving, and then disappeared into a study. Hours later, a helper came into my room and started packing every single thing that I've left in her room. <laughs> well... A few minutes later, she gave me a plane ticket for later that night. I was absolutely outraged. Well, he could not even tell me face to face that he was kicking me out. And he expected me to leave my child with some stranger. I was outraged as I barged into his office and he was seated calmly on a phone call as if he had not just imploded my whole world. I snatched the phone from his hand and demanded that he speaks to me. He told me to stop acting crazy and leave his house. Well, we argued for a long time, but in the end, I was defeated. He told me that if I wanted to leave, I could leave, but I was not going anywhere with this child. I wanted to stay and fight for my son. I wanted to shake him until he revealed to me exactly where my son was, but I was so tired. So tired of fighting him when I knew that I could not win. I was too weak. He literally ambushed me and he had higher ground. I knew how he operated. I had sat in when he brought clients into our house. I knew how his mind worked, how his tricks worked, and I knew the best way to win this. So, 
I took my things and I left my son with his father. Right now, I'm safely out of the country. I have no idea if my son's okay, but it's fine. This separation will not be for long. I've hired one of the best lawyers in the country who will help me fight for my child. I have all the evidence needed to prove that he is not the fit father, for I had plan B in case I was unable to skip the country. Every time he and his family has hurt and undermined me, I documented it. I have an entire folder filled with dirt on them, and I'm going to use it to get my son back. A few months ago, I would have told you that I have no bond with my son, but now I fill the bond with my son. I would burn Alex's whole world down just for my kid. Now I understand. Mothers who would risk their own lives for their children. I cannot let my son stay with that man. He's not a good man. I don't care how much money he has. He's not above the law. Update six months later. Hey everyone, I'm sure you're all wondering what happened after my decision to go after him, right? Don't worry, I'm okay. I mean, there were a few scars, but I heard that scars heal with time. The past few months have felt not like six months, but more like six years. People have turned on me, spat on me, and conspired against me. People have believed lies about me. I've reached a point where I've wanted to give up and just let him have the child. I've reached the point where I was tempted to go back to school and pretend as if the past three years have been a nightmare. But what saved me was a dream. Don't worry, it'll make sense once I'm done telling you my story. After hiring the lawyer, we got a judge to issue a court order for my separation from this man. My intentions were clear to get sole custody of our son, and for that to happen, a few truths had to be revealed. As you might have guessed, when I was leaving the country, my real name was revealed. When I came in, my parents made sure that my real name was not revealed to my in-laws. But when I made the plans to leave, my real name was revealed. He knew when I left that I was not Zara. But he didn't say a word about it, not a single even utter. I knew that he wanted to use that in the future to destroy me when I filed for divorce and hey, I was ready. The court case took place in his country of residency and this meant I had to go back there and face his family. His family was upset. They harassed me on social media and in person. They tried to intimidate me, but for the first time ever, I stood my ground. As for my own family, they were not happy at all with my decision. They told me that I was alone and refused to support me. Everyone blocked me. And just like that, I was alone. The only person on my side was my friend Gillian. You see, I met Gillian at university when she was doing the same course as me. She was the one who introduced me to the divorce lawyer and, well, to cut a long story short, court was brutal, especially when Alex revealed my betrayal. He said that he would press charges against me for lying to him. Luckily, he did not. Not after I revealed to the world what sort of jerk his family was. I had pages upon pages of how his family had treated me and I also had information about his mistress and his infidelity throughout our whole marriage. Things did not look very good for him. You could say, the tables have turned. So, he decides to play another card, huh? He came to my hotel unannounced one evening, and I came home to find him sitting in the living room. I was about to call security, but he told me that he was not there to harm me, but to help me. He told me that if I gave up the custody battle, he would give me money every year. Allow me to spend a month with my child and not sever ties with my family's company. He told me to think about it and I could even go back to school and I would be independent with no one to control my life. Three years ago, I would have taken the deal, money, freedom, education. That sounds a lot of a luxury to me. But this was not three years ago, it's now. I told him to leave, but he told me I had 48 hours to accept the offer and I spent the whole night thinking about it. I even told my lawyer about it. Every person that I told, told me that it was probably the best offer I could get. That if I lost the court battle, I would be worse off. And then, well, a dream saved me. I had a few hours to get back to him and alert him of my decision. I had not slept in days and my mind was all over the place. I nodded off and had a dream and in the dream I saw my sister. She told me to be selfish once in my life. It was very vague and probably just a figment of my imagination, but that's when I knew what I had to do. 
I declined the offer and I went right back, marching to that court, where I got custody of my baby and the divorce. He had to pay me a substantial amount of child support, and it was up to me when and if he ever even saw the kid. He was deemed an inappropriate guardian for the child after more evidence of his party boy lifestyle surfaced. It's like taking candy from a baby. <laughs> when I found out that I won, I was in shock. I heard the words, but it was like I was underwater when I heard them. He told me that I was no one, that I could never win against him, and his family had called me a woman with no morality, whose family would not even support her. But here I was, ah, with just the truth, and the best lawyer by my side. I won the biggest battle of my life. I burst into tears when I saw my baby for the first time in months, and it was like a hole in my heart filled up, and suddenly, all was right. I left the country as soon as all the paperwork was sorted, and now I live happily with my baby. I guess everything worked out. This is the final update. Two months later. So, here I was, thinking that life was going to go smoothly after the court case, but there was still one last thing that lingered. My family. I used a couple of weeks to get myself a place to stay spend time with my baby and experience freedom, and then I decided that I needed to go and see my family. I should have left them alone. After all, they blocked me when I needed them. But I needed to close the chapter of my life before I started a new one. So, I went back to visit my family, and they were not happy to see me, but they allowed me to speak. As I expected, they blamed me for everything, even though they had literally thrown me to the lions. In addition, they thought I owed them money that I got from the divorce settlement. I saw a side of my family I've never seen before. They loved someone as long as they could benefit from them, but as soon as they were useless, they turned on them. They had done that to my sister. They had treated her like she was disposable and gotten her engaged to the despicable man. And then after she passed away, they forced her memory to move on through me just so they could save themselves. I had to leave all that made me happy because my father and my uncle made poor decisions. I did not stay long. I told them that they would never see me or my child again and then I left. I also found out that Alex is getting married once again to some poor unsuspecting girl. I'm not surprised and frankly I don't care. What I do care about is that once my son is two years old, I'm going back to school so that I can finish my degree in architecture. My love for her, it's not died yet. I've dreamt of it over the last three years now. I don't plan to get married ever again. I am done. I just thought of having to answer to another man again. It makes me sick. I only have one real love in my life, and that's my son. Every day he's growing, he's learning to speak. His bones are growing stronger. Each day he runs a little faster and laughs a little louder. And my heart's healed even more. And he looks just like me, Zara. I think that my sister is watching over me sometimes and she's proud. Finally, I can let her be free and be myself, Clara. It feels so strange to not be her. I'm still learning how to be myself again, but I know I can do it. As long as my son's with me. What a wild story. I'll be honest with you guys. Every single commenter in the comment section of this one was saying, I'm so glad Alex lost. Alex did not deserve to have custody of the kids. Guys, I want to know exactly what you thought about this story. How you would go about it differently if you were in OP's unique shoes. Because, well, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I don't think many of us have been in this situation. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section, though, guys. Once again, I hope you enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe for daily videos. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.